I've been debating with myself whether or not I should make this video already or not. Whether I should wait or if I may change my mind. But it's been just on my mind so so much these past few days that I feel like not only is the right time to do it right now, but also that I have. To do it today we are going to be checking out my favorite in my opinion the best death across all super massive games it doesn't just include the dark pages anthology but also under dawn and the quarry which have already inspected a bit more as we have already made a video ranking the top five deaths in both of these games and given the dark pictures anthology season one will conclude at the end of november with the devil me i was specifically thinking okay maybe i should wait with this video because i already have planned to make a big big video uh, looking at the four games of season one where i will either also rank my favorite deaths of each of those games or maybe make a top 10 including all the games you know but as i've already done it for Man of Medan, Little Hope, and the Quarry, and now also House of Ashes. After I finish these games, you know, Supermassive games are just something special to me. You know, every single playthrough or every blind playthrough of these games just really does something to me. I always go ahead afterwards and dive into all the possibilities. How did my playthrough look like? What choice altered what? How could have it looked like if I decided here differently and all that kind of stuff. And including that also obviously then means looking at the possible deaths that could have happened. You know, I've unfortunately not managed yet to um, save all my characters within any of the games. So, you know, I've already experienced some deaths firsthand. But there are just some deaths um, that are very rare. You know, some deaths that you likely won't get on your first playthrough or you need to get like very specific combinations to get there. And there is one death in House of Ashes that I think nobody got in the first buy playthrough. At least I hope so. Because to get that death, you gotta do something quite cruel. And something that, again, I don't think a lot of people may have done. That death, in my opinion, results in the greatest and most impactful of the entire series. And anything that Supermassive Games has done thus far. Before we go into it in detail, I will let the death play out in full. It's nothing. Let's get the hell out of this godless place. Wow. Okay. That's my exact reaction I basically had after seeing that for the first time. The Jason and Selene bonding was my favorite plot within the game. Seeing two soldiers that are supposed to be enemies become true friends was an amazing experience. Even if Selene had to break through Jason's shell that was built by the system. So to go through all that and have it all end by seeing Jason leave Selene behind is truly heartbreaking. What makes this moment for me though is the way Salim reacts. There is no anger, no screaming, no cursing as he realizes what just happened. He just drops down in disbelief, innerly destroyed at the human betrayal of someone he thought he could now trust, someone he would believed to be different. His words aren't just judging Jason, but you, the player. And even while doing so, he calls himself a fool. Meaning he isn't just blaming you, but himself for trusting someone from the opposite side. Thinking that during the war, he was truly naive enough to be trusting someone wearing different colors. That, after he tried to tell everyone how foolish they are for believing that way, to just basically end up as to fool himself, is simply 
unbelievably heartbreaking. And of course, the fact that he didn't even want to be at war in the first place. Not just that day, but even before that. He was forced into doing this. The war that was forced on by the upper systems that he and the other normal civilians just had no say over. He had to go to war, even though all he truly wanted to do was live his life with his son. Whose birthday he wanted to celebrate that day, even though it now unfortunately ended up being the final day of his life. Which is what makes those final moments that much more painful. And again, just like his reaction to realizing his fate, his reaction to when he realizes what approaches him is the same. There is no last stand. There is no crying, no fear, no terror, no screaming, just acceptance. Saying his son goodbye from afar, looking death into the eye while having his back turned to it, taking one last breath as death marches towards him. What a shot, what a moment. Painfully beautiful, sad and horrifying, yet stunning in execution. So many emotions that can be felt at once while experiencing this moment. Truly impactful as our warrior, unable to see his son one last time, accepts his death and ends his life the way he lived it. Honorfully and peacefully thinking about his son. As mentioned, there was no chance that I would ever experience a death like that in my blind playthrough because I will always try to save everybody. So again, if this happened in your first playthrough, then bad person, okay? I just tell that straight out like that, you're a bad person. But again, it's one of these deaths that you really need to do specific things for. And when you then actually do get to see it, you know, when you have the curiosity, okay, I saved Salim in my first playthrough, what happens if I don't? This is the result and it's truly heartbreaking. If you really choose to leave him behind like that, then the result is just heart-wrenching, heartbreaking and truly an impactful moment, okay? And I feel like there was no other death. Not, neither in Antidon, nor the Quarry, nor Man of Medan, or Little Hope, nor do I believe that there will be a death in the Devil and be even slightly as impactful as this one. Which is why I... I've already decided for myself, even before the Devil in Me comes out, even before looking at any of the other games that may come out in the future, that this right here is the greatest, the most impactful death across all supermassive games, and no gore was needed. And to achieve that, the horror game is truly respectable. Good job. This is it for today's video. If you enjoyed what you just watched, click a like down below to show me that you did. Let's have a discussion down below in the comments, whatever or not. Do you agree with my statement here? Do you also think that this is the greatest step within all super massive games? Or do you have another choice? Glad to let me know down below. I'm very interested to see your guys' picks. And alongside that, if you enjoy what I'm doing, if you want to support me, then this sub would also be greatly appreciated. As soon as I have finished editing and uploading this video, I will be diving into my first recording session for our next blind play for project that will be starting tomorrow on Wednesday, Detroit Become Human. Albi will be there for it, I'm very excited for it, so join me there and other than that, a lot of other great content coming up, so for whatever content you may be interested in, whatever content you may want to in for, I'll be see you again soon on this channel. Stay safe, have been happy, have a great time, have a great remaining week, and see you again soon with more videos like these, or like mentioned tomorrow, with the kickoff to Detroit Become Human. Thank you so much for watching, stay sharp soldiers.